Hey guys, Bartels Bookshelf here, and uh, for my first uh, official video of Spooky Month, uh, I'm going to be talking about the ghost stories of M.R. James. Uh, I just recently finished uh, this Penguin collection that collects all of his stories and all of his uh, sort of ephemera. This is the first volume, Count Magnus and Other Ghost Stories. And then the second volume, uh, The Haunted Doll's House and Other Ghost Stories. Uh, these were both uh, edited by... Uh, Lovecraft scholar and, and, and weird fiction connoisseur, uh, S.T. Joshi. Uh, he wrote the introduction and uh, did all the notes. So yeah, uh, lately I've just really been in the mood for, for ghost stories. I, I, I love a good ghost story. I love a haunted house. I love all that stuff. I don't believe in any of it, but I, I, I just, for some reason, just ghost stories, like a, just a good, creaky, haunted house, you know, with a, with a, with a spook, you know, like I just, just, that stuff just scratches an itch for me. And uh, M.R. James is a uh, pretty much one of the masters of the ghost story. Um, but I'd never read all of his stuff together until now. Uh, and I'm really glad I did. So if you've never heard of M.R. James, uh, he was, uh, uh, primarily a, a scholar. He was, um, he was, uh, the provost of, I think, uh, Cambridge. Uh, he was the provost of King's College and then Eton College. But he was a scholar and he was particularly very interested in uh, medieval manuscripts. And uh, before his ghost stories, uh, his real sort of claim to fame was um, the the cataloging he did of uh, medieval libraries of uh, places, you know, like Cambridge and Eton College and stuff like that. Um, but he was very, very much interested in uh, in, in history and uh and ghost stories and those two interests combine in his ghost stories he really kind of um codified uh the modern ghost story in a lot of ways a lot of the uh, the tropes that we think of when when we, when we think of ghost stories you know haunted objects and um you know ghosts visiting uh you know bloody revenge um of course, these are all elements of ghost stories that have been around for a long time, but it was it was the way that he he synthesized them and put them all together. Um, one of the things that I really like about M.R. James is um, the way that he straddles sort of quiet, insidious uh, horror with um, these really uh, great moments of shock and uh, and and not necessarily violence, but he's just a master of ratcheting up suspense of, of sort of a in fact the thing that i one of the things i find interesting about his stories is that a lot of them start out almost a little bit boring um they're they're very much uh, kind of in the mundane um they take place in, in a world that we recognize they're very realistic he spends a lot of time setting up the characters and the, and, and the setting um, most of his characters tend to be antiquarians like himself you know very interested in history uh, and and through some uh some overly curious uh, messing about. Uh, they usually come into contact with some old object. Um, it could be an old whistle. It could be an old manuscript. Uh, and one of these stories, uh, this one, one of these stories features a set of uh, haunted binoculars um, that leads to them being um, haunted by a spirit and um, usually coming to grief because of it, or at least having a really good uh, scare. And uh, he really takes his time building up the setting uh, he spends a lot of time focusing on um architectural details and, and and landscape um just kind of very subtly sort of working his hooks into you and drawing you in and then when the the actual ghost appears and and you know and the scares kind of reach their climax the, he really kind of hits you with um these these real moments of of of, of these really like chilling moments and, and occasionally like being quite um shocking and violent for the time of course they're not graphic in fact, uh, he very much uh, abhorred um, graphic violence in his horror stories. But he still has a, he still has a way with um, just hitting you with like that final shock. Um, there's one story in the second volume called uh, "A Warning to the Curious," uh, which is about um, a young uh, academic who um, steals a or uh, he he he, un he unburies a, a, one of the faded uh, crowns of East Anglia. And um, at the end of the story, he's uh, visited quite a violent end, um, and he doesn't uh, linger on the details. But what he's but but he's but he's very uh, precise with the way that he 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 freaks you out. It's 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 hard to explain, but it's but it's great. Um, uh, and another thing that makes his stories interesting is. Um, the uh, the imagination of a lot of them um not just you know because when you hear a ghost story you think you know typical you know just a spirit haunting somebody uh 
But as I said, um, a lot of the spirits in uh, his stories are connected to specific objects. You know, like uh, one of the most famous stories in this first collection is uh, A Whistle and I'll Come to You, My Lad, which, again, is about a British academic uh, on a, uh, staying at a, at, a, at a hotel on the coast. And he finds some ancient ruins where he finds this uh, this old whistle um, with this uh, mysterious Latin writing on it, and he blows into it, and this mysterious spirit uh, starts uh, haunting him. Um, just the, the the way that he uh, he connected uh, the sp- his spirits to uh, to history and to artifacts. Um, uh, that sense of kind of the past reaching out and touching the present of uh, of um, you know because normally we think of the past as sort of very old, creaky. You know, sort of uh, ancient, um, very far removed, um, and in his stories, he very effectively depicts these situations where um, we sort of realize that the past is not dead and the past is not remote. But also, he's just very imaginative in the uh, in the descriptions of his ghosts. Um, so, some are, you know, your typical, you know, effervescent spirits, you know, wearing shrouds and things like that. But a few of them, like in a, a Whistle and I'll Come to You, My Lad, which you can see here uh, in this illustration on the front cover, um, the, uh, the, 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 the main character's uh, bed sheets come to life and, and basically attack him. And, uh, and, and just the way he describes kind of the, the sheets kind of uh, pressing over the face and giving kind of the outline of features and stuff like that. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of his other creatures, are, a lot of his other spirits are... Uh, sort of a very um they're very impressionistic um that you, you get the sense of, of of limbs or tentacles reaching out and touching you know um one of the other things i find interesting uh about his stories is how um and st joshi talks about this in the introductions to these books um how uh, his ghosts are very um they engage in, in what he refers to as sort of a a parody of affection in that um the ghosts are very um f- they're they're very touchy they're very physical with the with their um their victims you know there's a lot there's lots of like caressing of the face and uh in one of the stories of uh, the treasure of abbot thomas um the narrator describes the ghost reaching out and putting his arms around his around his his uh, his neck in sort of a mock embrace um you know there's sort of that 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 sense of like taking you know this taking physical intimacy and kind of twisting it and, and making it sort of uh, abhorrent. Uh, I will say, um, coming at these from sort of a modern reader's perspective, they can be a bit dry. Um, some of them can, uh, can be, uh, so some, some of the horror in these stories can be so quiet that, um, <laughs> the horror can be a little bit easy to miss, but man, like when the, when the best stories in this collection hit, they really hit. Um, if you only want to read one, I would recommend the first volume because this 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 is uh, this is basically his first two um, ghost stories, first two collections. Um, M. R. James published four collections of ghost stories in his lifetime, and this base this collects the first two, and the second collects the last two with you know little ephemera and things like that. Um, and his first two are generally considered to be his best, and I would agree. Um, this has uh, all of his classic stories, like the aforementioned uh, A Whistle and I'll Come to You, uh, Lost Hearts, The Mezzotint, The Ash Tree, Count Magnus, The Treasure Rabbit Thomas, The Tractate Mideth, Casting the Runes, The Stalls of Barchester Cathedral. They're all really, really great classic stories in here. Um, and again, uh, just, just, just very creepy, very atmospheric, very imaginative. And one of the things that I like about these uh, Penguin editions specifically is that um, they have, one, the introductions by S.T. Joshi are very um, very educated and erudite and very interesting. Um, they, they, they give a very good sort of overview of uh, the era that M.R. James was writing in and sort of the culture of the ghost story. And also in these collections, uh, they have, uh, at the end of the, the second collection, uh, they have... Um, collections of some of M.R. James's uh, prefaces and sort of little non-fiction scribblings about ghost stories. And uh, it's very interesting to read uh, some of his opinions. In fact, I, I think him and S.T. Joshi were sort of uh, birds of a feather because S.T. Joshi is known for being a very, very harsh critic. And similarly, uh, M.R. James was also a very harsh critic. Uh, he, he vehemently uh, disliked a lot of modern uh, ghost stories, a lot of modern horror writing. Uh, he saw it as sort of a prurient and just interested in sex and violence. He had no interest in the Grand Guignol uh, in, 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 any, in any sense. Um, he, d- he greatly disliked uh, weird tales and a lot of the pulp writing um, of the 20s and 30s. Um, 
Joshi mentions uh, in in one of the introductions that he he didn't uh, he he didn't have a lot of nice things to say about Lovecraft and some of his other sort of pulp forebears. So in a way, he was a little he was almost more um, harsh than St. Joshi. Uh, and it, it, indeed, in some of these prefaces, he really uh, kind of uh, takes a lot of uh, modern ghost story writers to task, um, even ones that you know people consider you know classic uh, classic authors you know he, he talks he, compl- he talks a lot about sort of the the, the gothic novels you know castle the castle of otranto and um turn of the screw and, and stuff like that uh he he really hates uh, matthew lewis's the monk he, he says it's you know vile and reprehensible but he also expresses a lot of uh, enjoyment for uh other writers um his favorite seems to be um Jay Sheridan Le Fanu, uh, you know the writer of Carmilla and Green Tea and a bunch of other famous stories. Um, he, he seems to, he tends to hold him in the highest esteem. Uh, in fact, in, according to some of these notes, a lot of the the sort of language he used uh, was borrowed from Le Fanu's stories. Um, so yeah, um, he, he was generally he was a very old fashioned person. He was not what you would call progressive. Um, he uh, he vehemently opposed um, women being given degrees at college. Um, he was a uh, he was re- he was raised uh, Anglican uh, and was um was he was he was quite religious, but not necessarily attached to a specific denomination. But he was very much a, a religious person, very very staid, very kind of um, what you would think of of a typical Victorian academic, I suppose. Um, and uh, he, he, he seemed to have a, a an obsession with holding on to the past, uh, especially uh, once they got once we got further into the twentieth century, and he encountered things like the First World War, and uh, you know in the twenties, um, how uh, a lot of uh, sort of that, that Victorian sensibility was attacked, and um, he actually um, mentions that in one of these stories where. Uh, the story, the, the story, the narrator of the story begins, you know, telling his tale, and uh, the guy that he's telling the story to says, you know, oh, you're you're beginning the story in a very Victorian mode, and he was like, oh, I was raised Victorian, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, and so it's very it's very interesting, but but again, there's there's that contrast of uh, sort of the very staid, uh, subtle, quiet horror, and then um, you have these moments of like sharp shocks and and visceral. Uh, chills and, and, and you know and things touching and grasping and, and it's that contrast of those things you know like in, in Lost Hearts for example Lost Hearts deals with uh, the ghosts of two children whose hearts have been torn out by a, by a, a sorcerer who wants to create this formula to, to give himself eternal life you know so you have these m- so despite his, his argument uh, for uh, reticence in a uh, ghost story writing, he has these very shocking moments of, of savagery and and of and of uh, and grew and um, visceral sort of a uh, textured imagination that really like sticks in your brain. Um, these, uh, as I said, these last two collections are generally considered to be um, lesser than. Um, than the first two collections, but there are still a really lot, a lot of good ones in here. Uh, the Haunted Doll's House, as mentioned, is a really good one. A View from a Hill is is is, is a great story. Um, and in fact, um, one of the things that I liked about this edition, that this uh, book, is that it includes um, some of the stories that weren't collected in in, a, in, in any of the collections. Um, and one of the ones I really enjoyed is called uh, Wailing Well, which. Um, it deals with a uh, Boy Scouts being haunted by a wailing well in a nearby campground, and again, um, that has some really surprising moments of savagery because it deals with you know kids, you know little kids being haunted, and um, the story does not end happily for one of the kids, and that was really surprising to see in, in 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 a story like this from a writer like this who again was kind of known for preaching reticence in these kinds of stories. So yeah, the the ghost stories of M. R. James. Um, they're 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 perfect spooky little nuggets of of bone chilling horror, you know, of of evil spirits and and antiquarians being haunted by the very items that they so cherish, you know, the historical items that they so love to 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 pour over. If you kind of want to know where the modern ghost story really began, it started here with M. R. James. Uh, they can be a little dry at times. The language can be a little dense and archaic. But I think uh, if uh, if you you know, pull up a chair on a cold, uh, cold night. You know, next to a, a roaring fire, and you let yourself be taken away on, uh, by these stories. I think you'll find them uh, just as effective as they were, you know, uh, over a hundred years ago when uh, James 
read them over Christmas to uh, to his fellows at college. Yeah, that's my sort of general overview of M.R. James. Uh, there's a lot more to him than that, um, and there's a ton of stor- more stories that I could have talked about, but <laughs> this video's gone on long enough. But yeah, if, if you love ghost stories, you owe it to yourself to check out James. I really, really enjoyed them, and I definitely want to check out some of the writers that inspired him now, like uh, Jay Sheridan Le Fanu and some of the other uh, English ghost story writers of that time period, like E.F. Benson and Algernon Blackwood and people like that. Um, So yeah, uh, hope you're all having a good spooky month, uh, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.